I'm Joan Agajanian Quinn, and welcome to the Beverly Hills View. Our guest is the master marvel of Motown, Grammy Award winner Thelma Houston. She's a multi-talented singer, songwriter, actress, and international performer. Literally a whirlwind of artistic activities. She was born in Leland, Mississippi, raised in Long Beach, and she's appeared in venues around the world, as well as charity parties and awards events in Beverly Hills. When her name is mentioned, it's greeted with love and respect. Then the next sentence is, she's famous for her song, Don't Leave Me This Way. And then they try to sing it, but never on key. I always say, just dance in your head to that music and let Thelma sing it. So I heard that it was the 70s anthem of West Hollywood. <laughs> Her show at the Nate Holden Performing Arts Center is called My Motown Memories and More. So we love you, Thelma Houston and Beverly Hills. Oh, thank you. And we're glad you, that Joan. you're with us. Thank you. So you were brought up in Long Beach. Mm -hmm. I was born there. I, my family moved from Mississippi um, from uh, when I was 10 years old, and we moved to Long Beach because my grandmother had a brother and a sister already living there. Oh. And so they, you know, thought that, you know, leave the, the lovely <laughs> hot weather, <laughs> hot weather and, <laughs> and welcoming uh, atmosphere of Mississippi and come to Long Beach. Now, and I, and I went to Burnett Elementary, and I went to Franklin Junior High School. Oh, she remembers it all. And Poly <laughs> High School. Wow, that's great. Yes. <laughs> but I know <laughs> that Long Beach is a long way from Detroit. So how did that path happen? Well, actually, I joined the, uh, the label when they moved to Los Angeles. Oh. Yeah, I was never part of the, of, of the, uh, of the Detroit uh, you know, original. I kind of, I kind of missed it. Well, you know, but the thing is, uh, what's uh, ironic about it is that they were all. We're, those are my peers. We were the same, you know, oh, in you the were? same age group growing up. But they were, uh, you know, I was in in Long Beach. They were in Detroit, and they were starting their careers. By the time I was like twenty, <coughs> twenty one, I had been married and had two babies. So. Wow. So I joined Motown after they came to Los Angeles. You have a show at the Nate Holden Theater. Do you tell this story in the yes, show? Oh, yes. you do tell it. I do tell it because you know how there are certain instances in your life, you know, important things that were going on in your life. Maybe you broke up with your boyfriend or you moved to another town or you, you know, whatever. And there were certain songs that were going on, and 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 so that song, when you hear it, it brings back certain, brings back those exactly. memories. So that's how I came up with the idea of doing these Motown songs because Motown had such a wide range of of. Uh, so they're Motown memories, even though you weren't in Detroit, right? Did exactly. you ever go there to record? Never. Never. Isn't Never. that interesting? And you know what? The only time that I was ever in Hitsville is that <laughs> about tw when they were celebrating their 25th oh. anniversary back there. And I had an opportunity to see it then. And it's amazing to see this little, tiny little studio That's what they say. that all of these wonderful uh, sounds, and, and it's a very lively sounding, even still. If you clap your hands, you can still hear the oh. liveliness and you know why that you know uh, the, uh, the spirits sound. there right? <laughs> yeah the spirits good there. good vibes so when you decided <clears throat> to do this show on stage who wrote it for you the show was written uh uh by um it was like a really like a collaboration between Iona Morris and uh, myself is she yes. directing it and Iona Morris is the director of it and where and what had she done before well right now she's working uh, as a, a as a coach, I think, for the children on Blackish, and she has done lots of plays. Oh, She's oh. done um, the uh, she she uh, directed Bag Lady, starring Tammy Mack. She uh, was in uh, the smash hit. Um, oh my God! With the three three uh, the three ladies. Um, oh, the ones that go to watch it. That yes, yes. <laughs> 
I'm I sure I can't, I can't, I can't remember names. Things, yeah. But you remember But anyway, music. she's done lots of things. <laughs> How do you remember all the lyrics? <laughs> well, Woo. you know, I'm just not going to even think about it because so far it hasn't been a problem. You just start singing. <laughs> Is it live? But you know what? You know what? There have been times in my career early on when I have forgotten Yay. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, and so now I'm saying, oh, good, I know it's coming. But uh, so far, it hasn't been a problem. So is it live music during your pl your uh, My show? Oh, yes, your yes. Show? I have, um, I have uh, five pieces. Oh, wow. And I have uh, two background singers. And that's a great little venue, oh, isn't it? Oh, that the late Holden Theater. I went there to see, uh, I think I told you, five oh, guys named Mo. I've seen other productions of other things. Uh, it's a nice little the size, the size of it is just perfect, and it's it's close. very intimate. It's close, and there are no bad seats. No, and it's close to everything. And it's it's on Washington Boulevard. Yes, on Washington yeah. Boulevard, and it's really um, a happy place. Oh, There's it like is like a little art gallery it is. in the front, right in the front, and a little <laughs> cafe right yeah. in, right right next to it, yeah. joining it. It's very nice. So, how very long lovely. is the show? My show is ninety minutes. Oh, no intermission. No intermission. So you just get on stage and you start singing. I just get on stage singing. and we do it. And once, and once you start singing those songs, there's a party. Is everybody <laughs> clapping? Do oh, they, yeah. Does the audience? And they, they, people, people like to sing. How can you not? I mean, you, you know, how can you not is, sing along? I know. It's the great. Yeah. Uh, what about your costuming and et cetera? I, how do you I, well, well, you know, I think, I, let me put it like this. I, when I go and see entertainers and they're known, some of them, you know, a lot that, that are known for doing that, and, and you're saying, oh, I wonder what they're going to have on next, and, yeah, you know, right. and I love that. <laughs> but then I also like the entertainers that once they get out there and they do a show and you get so involved and wrapped up in what they're doing and spiritually you're connecting with them oh. that you don't care. I mean, you don't want them to leave the stage and go put on another outfit. That's a really and good that's, point. And that's what I want people to be drawn into the show and so there will be no costume changes. <laughs> <laughs> no, you it's gonna you, be me. Exactly. <laughs> but that's what we came for, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's gonna, what we're yeah. here today for. Exactly. And and one of the things we're gonna see a video of uh -huh. a couple of the songs that are in the show. So you have 20 Motown hits that mm -hmm. you sing. Mm -hmm. Were these songs made famous by other people like Stevie Wonder and Gladys Knight and Martha, Van, mm -hmm. uh, Martha Reeves? All of the Motown hits except for Don't Leave Me This Way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the great song. <laughs> Were all recorded by other artists. What oh. happens is these stories, these songs, represent certain times and certain periods in my life and what was going on. Oh, it tells your story? For instance, it tells my story. For instance, uh, for the two songs, the two songs you just did, the, the heat, heat Wave. wave. <laughs> okay, and please, Mr. Postman. Oh, I love it. Okay, Heat Wave. Okay, now that was a hit by Martha Reeves and Vandellas. That was. And like I said, we're all, we're, we're, we're our peers, so we're around the same age right. group. Were you friends? No, they were in Detroit. You were friends. <laughs> and I was in Long Beach. Okay. But listen, this is what's going on. They were starting their careers. They had music out. At that age, I was like 18, oh. and I was going to have my child. Oh, that's what you said. That's you were what, raising yeah. your family. I was going to have I was going to have a kid. Oh. You know what I'm saying? So it took a little time for me to catch up. So this can tell your story. Exactly. And so Talk about Heat Wave. Who did that, Martha? That ben was Martha Reeves and the Martha, Martha Vandella. Martha you Vandella, say, right? Yes. <laughs> and then uh, Mr. Postman. <laughs> Mr. Postman was the Marvelettes, and that's a, oh. that's a, that was before I actually the, the songs in the show they reversed because before 
uh, when I was waiting on Mr. Postman, is deliver the letter while I was waiting for my own. I was delivered, because that's when I had delivered learned. Delivered the baby. <laughs> I had learned that I was going to have a baby. Deliver the baby. And then heat right. wave is when she, you know, was, was born. Oh, so that's how you, and, and, then, and you tell the, the oh, narrative? Oh, yes, I tell the narrative. I tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me okay. God Okay, the then you have <laughs> Stevie Wonder's songs. Where does that come in? So well, tell, <clears throat> take us through a little bit so we know what to expect. When well, I don't want to give it all away, but it's just, that. It's through these, through my life story, through these different songs and what was going on at that time. Uh, the story, uh, the st and some of the stories, some of the songs are, are in the show because I worked with some of those artists. Oh, like oh. Smokey Robinson. Oh, great. With Smokey Robinson, I worked Carnegie Hall. Wow. He, I opened for him at Carnegie Hall. Um, uh, Stevie Wonder produced a song for me for while I was on the label, right? Oh, that's and there's so a story, right. you know. So, there's so there a story. are there's a story. Gladys Knight was she older or well, younger? Well, Gladys Knight, she's I think Gladys is around the same age. But the the Gladys Knight is I I never I I know her, but it but but her story is the the song heard it through the grapevine. Oh, I know. Is told <laughs> in this within the context of the play as songs when I was starting to sing in clubs. Oh, I think that makes it so much more interesting. That the this, way that. That, that's one of the songs, and that, and that when you sang in the clubs back at that time, you had to sing, you had to try to sound as close to the original recording. Oh. So that's so, Gladys is in there because at one time, I guess oh. I was trying to be a, a Gladys Knight, and I probably had a couple of three pips. <laughs> It's a pimp <laughs> Do you have any pips in this show? <laughs> any pips? No, I have, I have two back, two very fantastic background singers. Oh, you do too. Yeah, two, so you have a guys. full stage. Yes, yes. So it's like fantastic. And do you take this show other places? We've so far we've put, we've played in Maine. We've played in Oakland. We have played oh. the Catalina. Oh, that's. We played on a, we played on a cruise ship down oh, going down to a, Mexico. Yeah, good. So yeah, we've we've done. And then do you time. finish with "Don't Leave Me This Way"? Well, yeah, because <laughs> well, that's what it's like. To. It's like up there. <laughs> You're the only one who can sing it. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna see the show definitely, oh, and well, I thanks. think that people have an opportunity to see it all over since you're playing it in so many different places uh, besides the Nate Holden yeah, uh, but performing we want them arts. To come there. Yeah, come because that's yeah. the, the closest because this, to Because us. this one is, this is actually like the first theater. We've been doing it oh. in like, like when we were on the cruise ship, yeah. we did it in a room, you know, for, like the, yeah, yeah. For, yeah. But, They're a little uh, auditorium. But it's a type. big club, but it was a big, like a nightclub. And oh, then and Catalina's like, actually, but this is an actual performing. You have a stage. Yes, you yeah, have like a performing <laughs> arts, you know, like a, you, you know. have a director. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so um, let's start Ooh. at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Why did you move? You told us why you moved from Mississippi mm -hmm. to your grandmother and your family. Was, it, was mm -hmm. there music in the family there? Um, <clears throat> no. No. My mother uh, used to sing when she was a little girl. And she was just saying in her, you know, in her church? church and things. But of course, singing was, you know, not anything that was really considered like a livelihood. Is that right when you were growing considering, up? Considering, I mean, not even when I was growing up. So you know, it wasn't it wasn't like that for my mom. So my mom never really. The, oh, I but see. my mom really did. She, my mom did, she did have a good voice, and she could harmonize and things like oh, that. Oh, so you ha you got something from there, right? But um, I started singing. Um, I think um, from the age of three. And, uh, and that was start back singing. in Mississippi. Yeah, with uh -huh, your mom. and start singing in church. Oh, you did. Uh huh. Well, actually, it was the lady who was my babysitter who was the one that was. Taking she played. You? Yeah, she played the piano in Sunday school, and so she would practice her music for the coming Sunday, and as you know, and I would be playing around the piano, and so she noticed that I would sing the songs That's back, true. and I would know when to start and when to stop, and you know all of that. And Things that you don't even think about. That you don't. Right? Yeah. But she was <clears throat> thinking about yes, it. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, <coughs> so, you started taking acting lessons. Were you going to be an actress and rather than a singer, or well, do both? Well, when I was at, after I joined Motown, 
And uh, oh, it was after Motown. Oh yeah, yeah. After I joined Motown, and there was, um, and at that time, Motown was inter their their interest was really going towards um, the film industry. Oh. You know, because they made uh, Lady Sings the Blues, oh. and then Mahogany, and these kinds of things. And so there was um, um, I think it was the name of Robert Greenwald, a, a young director who was going to be running that department. The film department. The film department. And he came to see a show of mine, and he and he um, suggested to me that he thought wait that he thought I was an actress, and uh -huh. I, and that I, and to which I felt very like, what do you mean by that? I you took, a, like, I took it like that. I was <laughs> because I didn't get it right. Because I'm saying, what do you think? Do you think I'm acting when I'm singing? I says, oh. I'm not acting. Oh. I, I said, I'm when I sing those songs. That's how he it's said. from your. It's from he inside, says, right? He says, of course. That's what I mean. He says, so you can do oh. the same thing with words. So anyway, he convinced me to go and take. Um, and I studied with a lady by the name of Joan Darling. Oh yes. Yeah, that's who I studied with for about three or four years. Oh wow! But did you take music lessons too? That's where he's gonna no no singing no. Lessons. I used to take I, when I was in junior high school. I used to play a flute. I was gonna ask you what instrument. And then I played. I used to play a flute. And then when I was when when, when we were in school, we had to you know I had choir, glee club, and that we uh, had to learn. Were how you to in the orchestra? Cyber. I was in the orchestra. Yeah, and the band. And the band. Uh -huh. right. I only got to be an orchestra at Christmas time. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> then it was the band all the time. Then other it was times. the band and the orchestra at together. The football, right. football games you're and right, all right, that, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, so you started taking, you took lessons from mm -hmm. Joan Darling. Uh -huh. I remember her. Yeah. And, and then you were on Marty Feldman's Comedy Hour. Yeah, I did. How could you do that? Did just, you sing? Yes. <laughs> oh, you, but you played different characters. Yeah. Just, you know, sing, just, um, uh, but I think that was just a singing one, that one was. But I did do others. I did, um, I had roles in other shows, uh, Ka uh, Cagney and Lacey, Cagney. Yeah, you did a lot of TV. A lot TV of those, a lot of TVs. Uh -huh. and, a, and film, yeah. a lot of film. Uh -huh. um, the big times for you were starting in the 70s, mm -hmm. films, TV roles, um, and, and you continued acting. Mm -hmm. So take us, like, we have these decades, right? Mm -hmm. 70s, 80s, 90s. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Take us through those, those uh, decades. The decades. Well, as you said, excuse me. Because <laughs> what you did every decade, you seem to be changing your attitude crossing new streets, <clears throat> going into new um, we, dimensions. Mm -hmm, because you have to do that. Oh, you have to. <laughs> you have to do that. Because during the 70s, especially towards the end, there was such a, um, a uh, disco craze right. oh, has right. started happening. And unfortunately, anyone could put out anything and could get it played if it had a certain beat it was electronic beat, right, right uh -huh. electronic beat and so um and so it kind of brought the level brought 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 the level the the, the bar down a little bit lower until around the 80s um it was you know so then oh. you had to start doing something you know and so then i had to then i switched and i jimmy jam and terry lewis produced Produce me. I understand that. Mm -hmm. And then that's when you started traveling around the world yeah. with, a, with your own voice. Yes, yes. And you went to places like Chile and Switzerland and France yes. and uh, Indonesia, the yes, Far East. Yes. How were uh, those just... audiences differ? Did they differ? Well, my experience with those audiences, I'll put it like this: the first, my first foreign audience was in Japan uh -huh. and that was in the early 70s is that they had the World Expo in 70. Oh it was. Uh-huh and I, I was there that was my first. Okay now it's been about maybe six years since I was in Japan but from that time from the 70s up until this point there were still people who were loyal. You had the Fan clubs. Oh, fan clubs. Who were still loyal. They don't, they, if they once, and I've learned this, this has been my experience from all the, my international audiences, is that once they um, embrace you, uh, it's not about 
the popularity of your next song. Oh, so each <coughs> of these countries had fan clubs the, and yes. they had, were loyal to yes. Thelma Houston? Yes, and so you could always go there and work. So while it was, oh. while it was a lull over here in terms of, plus record companies were looking for a different kind of, um, a different sound, more young sound, as oh. they were calling it. And so it was hard to get. There were some people um, who were able to get, like Tina Turner, who was able to to um, bridge, you know, that uh, gap and you continue mean the youth on to be young, yeah, yeah, yeah. Active, <clears throat> but you but, dance but, but, but like that music, too. But her music, I'm saying, she was able to, re to record, oh. sell records that oh, way. Oh, I see. You know what I'm saying? See, yeah. And so that, so that, that takes you on to the next one. So it's important to have that recorded music. But if you don't have that, then you have to. Luckily for me, I had built an audience that when I went to these different places to work. I see. You know, they're, you so know. your audience was pretty much the same oh, because they were fans. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then was someone booking you into all these places? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So during that time, you also sang with a lot of top entertainers like Sammy Davis, Lou Rawls, Neil Sedaka, mm -hmm. um, Humperdinck, and mm -hmm. Smokey. And, mm -hmm. But where were those? The Four Tops, The Temptations, yeah. where were those shows? Well, with The Four Tops, I toured Europe oh, with them. Oh, did you? With The Temptations, I toured um, Japan and Hong Kong. Wow. With Sammy Davis Jr., it was more, um, uh, it was uh, national, more in the, in the United States. But I got to tell you, and I loved all of them. Uh, uh, I wow. loved working with all of these people, but my heart, the person that was my heart that was just was Sammy Davis Jr. Great he guy. Was, oh my goodness. Just a great, great person. And why? Well, <clears throat> I'll give you an example. A lot of times on shows, and I have to sometimes not remind myself, but we are all, you're, you, we are a team. I mean, you know, you, 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 you're, you're, you're a band your band, your background singers, the people, your crew, your sound, everybody collectively makes the show what it is. And he, I'm not, I'm not saying nobody else did it, but I saw how he did that with every person. Every person felt that they were a vital, he made them feel oh, they were a vital part of, of the his, puzzle. Of the puzzle. And yeah. it wasn't, and it wasn't, it wasn't just for show. He really meant it. You know, I think that really uh -huh. shows in anything you do, the person at the top yeah. is the one who makes the whole thing work rather than just about themselves. Exactly. So exactly. so you had that mm -hmm. and you learned that. And I learned that. And you could And it has <laughs> served me well. Yes, because you do it with your own people, yeah. right? It served me well, yeah. Um we're gonna take a break. <clears throat> We're going to come back and we're going to talk to Thelma Houston about her albums and her charity work. And maybe we'll hear that other song that made her so famous. <laughs> we'll be right back. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest. <laughs> Still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Recently, our country has witnessed catastrophic devastation. Hurricanes and flooding have upended lives and livelihoods. Across this great country, Americans have answered the call. That special calling that compels us when others are down to step up and do whatever it takes. America's at our best when, against all odds, we come together and lift each other up. Please donate to oneamericaappeal.org. America needs you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Joan Agajanian Quinn, and welcome back to the Beverly Hills View. We're with our guest, Grammy Award winner, Thelma Houston. We're going to talk about her albums. We're going to talk about her charity work and anything else she wants to talk about. <laughs> right, Thelma? <laughs> you did lots of albums, mm -hmm. or you made a lot of albums. Mm -hmm. um, did you make them alone, or did you collaborate with other people? 
I did uh, an album with Jerry Butler of R&B songs and pop, uh, pop, and pop songs. And then I did an album with a group called the Sisters of Glory. And the <laughs> Sisters of Glory was a gospel. We, did, we sang gospel. Well, stop. OK. The story of the Sisters of Glory started at an AIDS benefit at the Algonquin Hotel in New York. Right. And you guys all sang, and you were so great together right. that this album came up. That someone, well, before the album, <laughs> oh. someone asked us, to, would, would we perform for the anniversary of the Woodstock? Oh, right. Oh. So you guys were together for a little while. So we did that. And then they said, well, that went so well. I think you should do an album. We did an album. And then they thought, we think you should go to Italy. The Vatican. To the Vatican to sing for <laughs> I, the Pope. I know. That's so great. <laughs> did you do that? And we did. All those divas, how did you get to, how did you stay together? Were you? <laughs> well, well, I must say one person was excused, was excused because of religious beliefs. Oh, because of the Vatican? Uh-huh. Really? Mm -hmm. Interesting. And so... Uh, but who? Phoebe Snow was in it. Albertina. Albertina Walker. Uh, Thelma Houston. Thelma Houston. Cece Peniston. Wow. And um, and we and we did this this project, and that was a lot of was a lot of fun. But but when you got to the Vatican, mm -hmm. did you actually sing in the Vatican, well, or was well, it outside, or what? Actually, this was it was inside the inside of the of there, and it was to uh, to raise money wow. for to restore the chapel, the Sistine oh, Chapel. Oh, 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 And it's Michael a fundraiser. Angelo's, really? It's a fundraiser that they do, and people from all around the world will come there and do this You're a fundraiser. Uh, fundraiser. And you were asked to come? And I, we, we were asked to come and I perform. have to remember Sisters of Glory. Sisters of Glory. <laughs> and then, you, and you sang Woodstock, Woodstock to the Vatican. First to the Vatican, yes. And, what, and then you made an album? And then we made an album. And you didn't stay together? Well, everybody had different, different, uh, you know, careers. Uh, but you got along, okay. But we all got along. We had a good time doing it. That's and, so uh, great. And yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, you appeared um, on ABC's Motown 45 and the Disco Ball. What did you do at, at that? What were you doing? It was uh, an ABC special. Mm, let me see. What was I doing? Probably was singing "Don't Leave Me This Way." <laughs> I've been singing "Don't Leave Me This Way" since 1976. And then, the, and then there was so, a 30-year celebration for PBS special American uh, soundtrack for a Motown or Same something. Thing. Same thing. <laughs> Same thing. I'm going thing. back. Okay, so then, and after 17 years of all these performances, mm -hmm. you made an album called "A Woman's Touch." Or yes. You, is that it? An album? Yes. Yes, I did. Why was that so important? Well, because it was, first of all, it was the first time that I had total control <laughs> over what I, what I sang, how it was produced, I don't know, who was on it, what, you know, what, what kind of songs that I wanted to do. And I, and I just did, uh, I did a lot of, I did a song, my favorite songs by some of my some of my favorite male artists. That's what I thought was so great. So they the men had sung the songs, and then you paid tribute to them in a way yes. and sang them yourself. Yes, yes. And I must say, and someone said, well, "Why didn't you do women's songs?" Well, my favorite singers. Um, what songs who, were they? Well, some of my no. I was going to say that my favorite songs by females. Oh, oh. And some of my female you know, people that I just love, if they've sung a song, then just leave that song alone and, and don't let that be their song because they've done it. They've already hit it out the park. <laughs> so you know what I mean? The men's. And so they're so, and you know what I mean? But if you do, if you do something that a, a man has done, then you can, you know, you can play kind of with the lyrics. If they did it fast, you can kind of do it slow. You can change it around. And plus there's a, you know, change it around and make it, you know, make it, it, it works. You're it, so it works. smart. Yeah. You're so smart. You know just what to do, right? And um, that woman's touch, mm -hmm. which is what you were so good at doing, mm -hmm. leads me to your charity work. Yes. Because as we said, you have done 
charity work for AIDS, women's rights, human rights, um, the 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 uh, I do the um, environment. I know yeah. you're like uh, you really give back. Yeah. is what I'm trying to well, say. Well, yeah, I think that I think that that's um, I for, for you know someone told me a long time ago that if you love what you do, then it isn't a job. Exactly. And I feel so fortunate to be in the entertainment industry. I get such joy out of it, and I, that's how I've, that's been my living. And so I feel that it's necessary for me to give back. Now, it first started, my first uh, charity work started as, as um, it wasn't looked at as, as charity work. It was, this was during the AIDS crisis, and oh. it was looked at as, you were helping your friends. You were helping because these are my friends. These are my hairdressers, my yeah. choreographers that we, my, knew that we knew personally. And they were dying. And, and they were dying. We didn't know what to do. We were, we were taking care of their animals. We were trying exactly. to help them get, make, get, you know, just every day to day life, just living. And so I've been fortunate enough to see it having gone from to that place to where it is now, uh, although we have a lot of work still to do. But um, so I, so as a result of that, then I got involved in doing a lot of other things, a lot of things connected with uh, AIDS. But I also do things for foster care. Oh, you I do, do foster things for, care. Yes, That's yes. so great. I for do you. things for pets. <laughs> I do. I have a little thing that I do, pets lifeline up in San, in the northern part in Sonoma. So I do all kinds of things. But you have you a know. voice, and you give yeah. it. And how do you connect with those different? Communities. People ask. That's how they connect. Yeah, people ask, and um, and um, it, when I can, I'm there. I know you're <laughs> so good. But something uh, aside from this and uh, the mm. albums we've talked about, something really totally <clears throat> different. After so many years, you did a recording, a collaboration with an LA-based producer, janitor. Janitor? Oh, Janitor. <laughs> For an album called Enemy. This is like so different, isn't it, from what we're talking yes, about? Yes, it is. But what kind of music is that? Well, I don't know. We haven't. <laughs> <laughs> are you writing but it? But Gabe, yes. Gabe and, I, Gabe and I are writing it and producing it. Oh, and, so we've, and, it's, and it's, we've been working on this for about three years. But, you know, it's coming up. It's totally different That's what I material, mean. It's a, uh, totally different. And uh, but I'm having I'm enjoying it so much, and sometimes we perform around around town with him. But yeah, but we we go as Janet. <laughs> Who is that? And I, his name is Gabe Noel. Gabe is a, he is a, a bass player, a, a cello and, player, oh, and, a plays, he? and he plays bass. So he's yeah. um, uh, classical. He's a musician. Yeah, he's, he's classically classical? trained, but he, he, he you know he plays with a lot of bands. And but this is a totally know. different from his yes. classic, from your Motown, yeah. from everything. Yeah, yeah. So we have It'll to be look. coming. You have to look for it. It's <laughs> going to be coming up. And I'll be on here, be on your show again when we get oh, it you'll done. you'll do that. Okay. And let you, yeah. So we think now that we've finished with Gabe, we finished <laughs> with Enemy, whatever that is, we've come full circle. And you sang Don't Leave Me This Way on American Idol mm -hmm. in 2009 and on America's Got Talent that mm -hmm. same year. Mm -hmm. And we have a little excerpt from that song that we're going to play right now. Okay, <laughs> top of the pops. That was right? top of the pops. That look, look at that little young face. I know. Mm. Well, tell us about that, that was, hairdo <laughs> that you. <laughs> well, I was just there's a funny little story about that. Is um, I was just saying on this on this one, I was at top of the pops in London, England, and doing my little singing. I had a hit song, and you know everything was grew great. And I I left there and um, went to Germany. And then uh, was on my way to a place called Bremen. And so you see the little scarf that's around my neck there. Uh -huh. 
my hairdresser that had gone with me decided that he was not going to go with me to <laughs> Raymond. He decided that he was he, he had become overwhelmed by all these beautiful looking models and things that we had met along the way. And they, they had this dinner and there was all these beautiful people there. And he said, Tom, <laughs> I can't do I can't I'll, go. I'll catch you. I'll catch up with you. And, uh, you know, that never happened. But anyway, I had to take that same little turban and, and, and wrap, wrap it around, around, around my head. head. So as you <laughs> went along, you had yes. to end up doing your own thing. Right. Yeah. I love it. So it's around your neck right there. <laughs> well, so many people have recorded that song. Who wrote it? Well, unfortunately, I didn't write it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and nor was I the first to record it. It was, it was That's written. That's what's so interesting. It was written by uh, Gambled and Huff. Which was out of they had the the um, the record label Philly International. They had that whole Philly International oh. sound, and um, and uh, and the first group to record it was actually Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. Oh, I don't remember uh, Blue Notes. I remember. Yeah, they the, well they they did the original recording. And unfortunately, we, as you said, you didn't write it, and you didn't own it, and you didn't. Did but you come. did own it. But I did. You because did own because this it. was because this song has really been the highlight of my career, and uh, you never get sick. I of never get. It? I never get singing s it. Never get tired of singing it, and people expect me to sing it every performance. And you know what? Your audience loves you for that, and you give it back to and them. And I give it back to them. I give the people what they want. Yes. So how does it go, baby? Baby, my <laughs> heart is full of love and desire for you. Woo, woo. <laughs> ah, and our heart is full of love and desire, desire for you. desire for you. So what can we say? Thank you, Thelma Houston. Oh, thank you, Joni. It's been so much fun. <laughs> and thank you for watching us today. We had a great time.